You are now tuned into Flipping the Birds, a Philly Sports Network podcast. What's going on? You welcome one, welcome all to a special edition of Flipping the Birds. Um, this is our Thursday podcast where we do that's your Q mailbag. Alongside me today is Morgan. I don't know why the intro seems a little rough. I the, the beginning, like when I hit go live for some reason, Periscope just logged out of Flipping the Birds Twitter account. So everybody that can see this right now is seeing it on my YouTube only. I mean my, my Twitter channel only. Um so a little a little bit of a rough start. <laughs> Chris is probably touching stuff he shouldn't have been touching. He on, has on, to be somewhere in the back end, just like touching something. Yeah, probably. That's yeah. I don't. Shout out, hey, shout out to you guys because you guys held Tuesday night down. Um, I was celebrating my 10th year anniversary with my wife, and yeah. you guys did anything? Huh? Had a good time. Had a good time. Yeah, you know, I, I, I lot. It's, it's so funny because I'm driving and I logged into the part where you guys are complaining about my background noise and then my doorbell. Yeah, and I'm like these <laughs> small efforts, bro. <laughs> Just let me, you the whole, the whole let time, me be like. without a pot. Like, let me just, you know, have a little vacation yeah. time. Um, no, no but yeah, I just feel a little off today. Um, brand new office desk, and I think the, the chair is a little shorter than my desk, so I'm a little off with that. Yeah, as you, well. look, you look a little, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, I mean, how you feeling, bro? Uh, pretty good, man. Week two, we got a lot of questions again. Um, it's nice. I got uh. <laughs> In the swing of the football season again, so I'm playing on Friday, so feeling good. I heard. I heard you tried out for running back for the Buffalo Bills. How'd I go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was nice. It went well. Um, they said they'd give me a call, so we'll see. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it's good, man. It's uh, back in the fall where we can do shit again. It's nice. So yeah, you guys stuff. just you guys kind of just really opened up out there, right? I mean, yeah, it's been a long time, man. It's nice just to see people again. But yeah, uh, America has been running wild. No, no, yeah, America, America's been running wild, like you know, like Ric Flair and Hulk Hogan all over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No cares. Um, yes. but if you guys are joining us right now, um, this is a live live podcast just to answer any Eagles questions you do have. Now we do already have some questions already sent to us um, by several Twitter users and Instagram users, so we'll go through theirs. Um, uh, if you guys have any questions, just shoot us in the chat. This is your time for us to have answer um, to, for us to answer your questions. Um, if you're listening to this on Friday. Happy iPhone launch, first and foremost. So if you got the new iPhone, congratulations to you. I'm sticking with my 11 Pro Max. If you don't, then you can use your old iPhone to jump on our YouTube channel, uh, Philly Sports Network, and watch our rerun. So sure. that's the plan. I so think I'm on like start. eight, so I can't talk. Anyways. I'm on the, I mean, I just I can't see myself investing that much money again, again in these phones. I have, I've I've only get free phones. Like Virgin calls me up to like you, you you know you got a free phone. I just hop on that. That's that's the way to be, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm cheap um, like that. Sure. Listen, I, I think you and everybody else in America, <laughs> except yeah. the one percenters, one percenters don't really care. But shout out to you guys. Um, so let's let's tackle our first question today. I guess we'll spit fire, you know, back and forth. If I go, you go, you go, I go. However you want to do yeah. this. Um, okay. but we'll start with. He, uh, Paul Balls three um, on Twitter asks De, who's filling the giant void? You want to take this one? Yeah, I mean it's a tough question, man. I think there's there's kind of two there's there's two parts where you got to fill right. Is is mm-hmm. one is the, the play on the field, but I don't know that you can really recover from the presence off the field, man. BG's uh, yeah, that's a tough tough shoes to fill. So I, I'm glad that he's he's obviously gonna be sticking around. Like he's gonna be around the facility. He, he's that type of guy. Um, but yeah, just not having him on the sidelines as much, and that's gonna be tough. So um, you know, hopefully Fletch can step up. Um, mm-hmm. Just that leadership. We got Rodney coming back soon, so that's gonna be huge. Um, but in terms of on the field, man, I think uh, it, it, you know obviously Josh Sweat's gonna be you know more featured. Derek Barnett. It's a good rotation, but I think. Uh, so you're Jeez. touching buttons in the background. Bro, okay, I was thinking about this earlier, though. I've been looking for, like, Eagles throwback stuff, and, like, it's so hard to find a candidate unless I'm shipping it. It's just hard to find. So if you guys need wild, any answer, Is it a wild fee for you to pay for, to buy, you know, in the States? I have to ship it. I have to ship it. No, I'm saying, is it a wild fee for you guys? Yeah, it's, like, 
30, 40 bucks. Oh, God. So anyways, I got to come down there one time and just, and just fill my boots. Just anyways, up. Yeah. I think that, I think the name that, uh, that might pop up is, is Ryan Kerrigan, man. They brought him on for a reason. Veteran presence can rush the passer in a lot of different mm. ways. Similar kind of guy to Brandon Graham, maybe not as good at this point in his career, you know, debatable, but I think that he, he pops up a lot more. Um, so I think just it's going to be a combination of guys, but I think Ryan Kerrigan is going to be the one that maybe sees the most uh, rise and snaps. That's I, I think I agree with that. Um, I, I want to say Josh Sweat, but I, Josh Sweat fills in the opposite side of um, a break if I'm not mistaken. He's, he's more productive so on does, the opposite. So does but it's pretty much just BG on that side. So they're going to have to move people around regardless, I think. But My only fear is, um, is Derek Barnett. And obviously, you know, you definitely saw what happened on Sunday where he, he tapped back into that that bad yeah. boy Barnett where I just, you know, I want to be, you know, I want to be rough and tough. Yeah. Um, I'm all for it. I get, you know, I completely understand, like, you know, that football is, a, you know, it's a tough man's game, which you should be able to do whatever the hell you want, but do it within the side, you know, do it within yeah. the, the sidelines. You got to do it on the field. So for him to be doing these bonehead um, penalties, um, that's my biggest fear. Because he is a talent, no matter how you look at him, uh, whether he's a first round bust or you know he should have been a second rounder, whether he hasn't been productive because he hasn't he hasn't been healthy. Um, Barnett has the talent to really be productive, but he just has to step beside himself and kind of like you know look at the look from the outside in and say, hey, okay, I can't de- I can't do these kind of things that are gonna penalize my team. So yeah. against the Cowboys, I think that is the most important person to look at because if Derek Barnett acts up in the middle of a rivalry game and cost this team yards, cost this team, you know, possible third down, third and 10, and turns into a first and 10 because of stupid bone that yeah. move. That's, that's a huge red flag. And they didn't move him. They didn't move him. They, you know, they picked up his option. Yeah. He negotiated his contract to go down a bit, um, but they didn't move him. And to me, that really sucked. I was hoping that they would move on from Derek Barnett and give Josh Sweat, who just signed an extension, the, the full-time yeah. role. But I think you're right in the um, sense that um, Ryan Kerrigan is going to be the guy. And I'm all for it because Kerrigan is a veteran. He knows what he's doing. And he's, he's just much, as much of a terror as everybody else is um, on that defensive line. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I just got – uh, I'm you're good. Doing, you're playing a risk with Sam Darnold at my quarterback. He just ran for a touchdown. So. Fancy oh, play really? Play. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's see. Um, Next question in our log, we have – Oh, so with early reports about BG being out for the year, who is someone how he could sign slash trade for that would be an instant relief from the loss? I have somebody in my mind. I've actually met yeah, you this go, gentleman. You go first. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'll take this one. Um, I've actually met him personally a couple of times back in my uh, my job in um in, in up north New Jersey. Um, mm-hmm. Olivier Vern. He he's not. I mean, he's not a stud anymore as he used to be, but he can be. You know, a nice plug and fit kind of guy at this point in his career he could actually be productive for this team in the meantime um i think vernon is the cheapest most easiest way to go about things but if you're not going to the route where you're sitting and training somebody like you have milton williams you have javon hargrave yeah. to play off the edge you have fletch who come off the edge you have a defensive group that can really rotate in and out and that's exactly what you want um, this is exactly what you built for for this very reason. Like, if, if people go down, it's next man up mentality, which is great. Um, and I think that you know, if you're going outside, you know, outside boundaries, then Olivier Burn is my guy. I don't think anybody else is really available right now. Who are you? Yeah, I've seen I've seen some people like um, clamoring a bit to to look at um, Clinton Farrell. Um, on Oakland, like, you know, wasn't even activated. Yeah. I don't really think it's a good look. I don't really think that's what you need. You don't he really want to take on last season, right? Fourth overall, too. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, like, I, I just don't think that's what you want in this league. You don't need another project player. I think, to be honest, I don't really see them bringing on anyone. Mm. Um, it's a bit of a cop-out. But what I, I do see to make up for that fact is maybe a lot more 3-4. Um, so, you know... Y- uh, it's unfortunately it's kind of going into that last question, but you might also see more Jannard Avery um, rushing the passer. Uh, looked a lot better last game than than the first game. First game was a bit abysmal for him, but it looked a lot yeah. better. I think you're going to see more three four. Um, so yeah, in terms of trading, like uh, you don't really want to trade away draft picks just in case you know you need them next year, and you know in case this rebuild goes a bit deeper. Um, mm-hmm. 
you know, you don't really want to trade away players. You, you need the depth. Clearly, you're already facing some injuries, so I don't know if it makes sense. And like you said, with the free agent market, there's there's really not that many options. It's very limited, um, especially yeah. at this point. Yeah, so um, I don't know. I just uh, – I feel like they stay put, and and, and Jonathan Gannon is good at that, man. He's good at uh, moving guys around. We've already seen all three, four. Um and, and and even like a five two look, so I th- I feel like that's that's the what threat they go. I don't know if they sign and trade for anyone. C- kind of a cop I'm sorry, Brad guy, but uh, yeah, that's that's the way I'm going. I think I, they stay yeah. put. I hear you, bro. I definitely hear that. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm honestly looking forward to seeing Kerrigan get more snaps because I feel like he was very limited in the first two games. With these, with this, we did see him more in the second game. <laughs> my my apologies. Yeah. Um, we did see him in the second game more due to the injury, but um. You know, full you know, full week of uh, of practice reps with the first team. It's this defensive line. I don't think they take they take a step back because to me, like everything's coming from the interior. Like everything's coming from Hargrave and Cox right now. Yeah, Barnett and Graham were just kind of like cleaning up the pile. You know, it's not it's not a knock on what, you know what they were doing so far, but because you know Graham is quick off the edge, but you have Josh Sweat who's also quick off the edge. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm sure. not. You know, I'm not saying like you know they're better. I've been. Off. I've been waiting. They're in a good position. I've been waiting for the three four with Milton Williams, Javon Hargrave, and Fletcher Cox, and and so I think that this like kind of opens the door for that. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously it sucks to lose a guy like BG, but um, it opens up the possibility to get really creative on that line, and that's kind of uh, kind of exciting too. Yeah, I'm actually looking forward to it. I mean, it's it's Cowboys. It's it's Cowboys week. I did miss. I did miss the last spot, so I will give my prediction. At the end of the podcast okay. about the game, I like it. And I, if I'm I not like mistaken, it. this is for anybody who's watching right now. Morgan, you picked the Eagles to lose again. I did pick the Eagles to lose. Okay, so you're what? You're, did you pick the Eagles to beat the Falcons? Uh, yeah. And then I originally picked the the 49ers to win, but then okay. I I switched it last week. So I all right, so you're one, one one right now. I'm one and one. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm hopefully yeah. I'm one and two. I'll be honest. Hopefully I'm one and two. But right. yeah. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. All right. So for the next question in our chat, it comes from Eagles Nation 90, who's a first time um, person asking the question. When will the Eagles start valuing linebackers? And this is something that you've spoken about possibly two weeks in a row, I want to say. Um, we spoke about this in the offseason a lot. So I'll let yeah. you, you know, take this by storm. Um. You hope it's soon, man. I, I think I think that in Howie's mind, I think that in his mind, bringing in Eric Wilson is valuing the linebacker position. I think mm-hmm. that he thought that that was enough. And clearly, uh, I mean, I don't know how many times he has to learn this, learn this lesson, but bringing in a free agent um, off, off a good season, like it just doesn't solve it. And I don't know really what valuing the linebacker has to look like. Like, I don't know if that means first round pick. I don't know if that means – you know, signing a big name free agent. Like, you know, people forget that, um, you know, Michael Kendricks was, a, was a relatively high pick. Um, Nigel Bradham was, you know, a high value free agent at the time. They didn't, they didn't not spend at the linebacker position, but you know, what did we get out of that? A Super Bowl. So mm-hmm. um, I think that people kind of make the mistake of assuming that we, we never have under Howie and, and we have, um, but it just like, it didn't last. And, and I think that we who did, thought who drafted that, Hicks? was it, um, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Who drafted Hicks? It was, it was Chip, right? Uh, no, I think, I think that how we did, but he was a late round pick. We, we just got lucky. Yeah. Um, anyways. Yeah. But I think he's a, th- a third. I want to say a third. I don't know why I should know this stuff, but yeah. Um, <laughs> perfect, okay. I know you have perfect yeah. hair and everything, but you don't, you have to relax yourself. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. I used to do the draft. I used to do the draft covers so much, and then now I just kind of, anyways. Um, but yeah, so I think that I think that he has valued it, and I think that the assumption was that moving away from Jim Schwartz's defense, it would change. And I think that you know how we kind of thought to bring in Eric Wilson. They they spent two picks on linebackers um, two years or a year ago, and and you know, so it's it's coming along. But I think mm-hmm. that. You know, in in a fan's mind and in my mind too, is you know it's got to be a first round pick. It's got to be a high second round pick. Um, we got a lot of picks in the upcoming draft. You, you hope it's then, but I just think that it's not Howie's way. You don't pay linebackers, similar to how you don't pay running backs. I'm worried about Miles Sanders' future too. 
I don't know. But anyways, that's a different. Can we, can we throw that question at the end, like as our own kind of question? Is that is that allowed right. for us to ask our own question? I I mean, if, as long as you're asking it and I'm answering it, and then I'll ask you, but we just can't ask ourselves. I feel like that's that's fun. I, I like that way. I like that idea. Right, um, that's the way. Right, okay, we're gonna do that. Um. All right. So next question, because I'm not Did really. Did you answer this one? I didn't, but I feel like I'm gonna say the same thing that you said yeah, about yeah. linebackers. Like to me, like there's an opportunity on the table right now. You get me? Like the, Jamie Collins is for sale. Jordan Hicks is for sale. You yeah. have Zach Ertz, a very very valuable piece that you're not gonna. I, I don't care what nobody says. There's, they're gonna resign Goddard for sure. Mm-hmm. Zach Ertz, you can move him for either or person, and you have enough draft capital to even keep Zach and move your draft a, a draft pick or two. For either person, Hicks is a better um, coverage linebacker, but Jamie Collins does, demands more respect out of a quarterback. If that makes sense, like if you're, yeah. you know, if somebody's in the middle field, you, you're going to be aware as to where Jamie Collins is. That's um, that's the thing it, too. Neither of those guys are like going to solve your linebacker problem just by bringing them exactly. in, right? So <clears throat> exactly, it's tough. I completely agree with that statement. Um, so our next question comes from a FTB fan that's been with us since the beginning so shout out to sean shank um at birds card dad on twitter so more of a big picture question if you're in nick sirianni's shoes what's the one major change you make after last week realizing that more than one is likely needed so my big change for last week is the consent in the league Jalen can't on the middle middle field right now um he's six foot one they're, they're worried about, you know, you have to really thread the knee in the middle of the field. Some Something that was emphasized last season was that Hurts was pretty good at threading the needle in the middle of the field. And I mm-hmm. feel like you have to – like, that's my key. Like, I'm running crossing routes. I'm, I'm, I'm going to attack the middle of the field my tight ends. I'm going to attack the middle field with Devontae Smith in a slot, Jalen Ray in a slot, keep Quez on the outside if need be. But I'm going to attack the middle of the field because, to me, that's how, that's how the, the outside opens up. You gotta, you, you know, you gotta draw them to the middle and and make them actually fear what you're actually gonna do. If if they know you're not a one dimensional offense where you're just attacking the outside and you're not attacking, you're not attacking the middle of the field. You're more of a threat. You're you're gonna get further in the game, um, yeah. and that's something that they haven't done in two weeks. They haven't done that sure. at all. It's been it's been all about the deep ball. It's been all about um, the screen passes, which is great. I love it. But you gotta yeah. attack the middle of the field. You have Devontae yeah. Smith. You have Jalen Rager, who are great. Um, after Dallas catch. Goddard, Dallas Goddard is, is phenomenal after the catch. Yeah. You have all this in your plate. Eat your meal, call it a day, and be daring. Listen, we all know this is a like Eva called it a no expectation year. We all know yeah. that. We don't. Nobody expects the Eagles to win the division, head to the Super Bowl, call it a day. No. What we didn't expect was this team to be, or well, I expected this because nobody else expected them off of FTB for some weird reason. What most people didn't expect from this team is to be competitive. They are competitive, but the, the way you get better is by acknowledging your flaws and attacking it. You got to yeah. attack the center of the field against the Cowboys is perfect opportunity. Um, Micah Parsons is talking a whole lot of crap for no reason. The guy's talking about he's a determinator and all this extra BS. Um, mm-hmm. Jalen Hurts Classic is, boy. yeah. I'm I'm gonna regret saying this. Jalen Hurts gives me Russell Wilson vibes. Small guy in the pocket and can make moves outside of the pocket, but um later in, in Wilson's career, he became more intelligent in the pocket. Mm-hmm. He, you know, he, he became more daring where he was he knew where to attack, how to attack, and when when to attack. Jalen yeah. is is in his I guess year and a half, honestly. He's still kind yeah. of a rookie-ish, um, where he's still learning how to how to, how to do what he needs to do best and when to, when to do it. Um, he's relying on his legs. He's relying on the deep on the deep pass, which I believe he has a nice arm strength. He doesn't have mm-hmm. bad arm strength like everybody else is saying. Yeah, um, I saw that sticking up for the man on Twitter. Absolutely, I yeah, because he, it's all about timing. Like, you, and it kind of yeah. makes me think about Madden a little bit because Madden, if you don't throw a ball on time, like you're getting picked off. Jalen yeah. hurts like you saw the Quez Watkins throw on time. Jalen Rager throw on time. Like if he, if he gets his timing down with Devontae Smith, they're gonna be lethal. But you gotta mm. attack the middle of the field first and foremost. That has to be yeah. a thing now. Yeah. Sorry, I took a long um, time with that one. Oh no worries. Uh, I know we got a question later too about um you know about attacking this defense as well. So okay. yeah, I'll keep I'll keep mine short and sweet for this one. It's it's stick with the run, man. Mm-hmm. Like 
Atlanta Falcons, we saw some some running in the second half. Uh, obviously, that game was a bit more out of hand, but mm-hmm. um, with the 49ers, they get, it was a close game all game, and we did not see them trying to run the football at all. Uh, Miles Sanders looked like this. That was a very difficult team to run the football against. The oh, 49ers man, have, have, been, have been a hard team to run the football yeah. against, and Miles Sanders was carving them up. Yes, five absolutely. yards, five yards, six yards, seven yards. Okay, we'll take a loss. Four yards, five yards, you know, and it, it just disappeared. And like that's mm-hmm. the one thing we thought that was going to be a major change from Doug Peterson to Sirianni is he's going to stick well, with the run. It's weird. They're they don't they're number one running um, number one rushing team in the league. I mean, yeah. in, the, in the NFC, number two in the league. Yeah, and so and it's either a lot of teams are not running the ball, or the Eagles are running the ball a little too much. But I completely agree with what you're saying because I feel like they're not doing enough with it. Yeah, I just, like you're getting you're getting five yards of pop, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you're averaging that on any play, you stick with that play. So for that to disappear in the second half of last game, um, listen, this is you know a, a Dallas team that if they're strong in one part of their defense, it's their linebackers. If you're not making them work, then they're they they have the chance of taking over that game. I think that's where they're strongest. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not a strong defense overall, but if you're if you know you gotta. In division matchups against a team that you might be fighting for the division, you gotta go strength on strength, and you just have to let, you know, Jason Kelsey chase down linebackers. You yeah. have to run let the football. Everybody do the job, pretty much. Exactly, and and it's gotta be all game. It can't just be five great runs in the first half, and then Kenny Gainwell comes in. I love the kid, man, but he, you know, he's not Miles Sanders yet. You gotta keep you, Miles, and you gotta get him going. Are you surprised? So really quick, before we jump to the next question, are you surprised that we have not seen Boston Scott yet? Uh, yes and no. I think that, um, the way that I've seen them run the football, like I thought pretty like before the season, I thought that we'd see more of them, but yeah. now seeing how we run the football, like we're not really, they're not really trying to get outside as much. Um, mm. it's more they're really inside runs inside zone. Yeah. Which to be honest for his size, Boston Scott's a pretty, pretty good at it, man. Like yeah. not, not a bad runner at, by any means. Um, but I, yeah, I think that, it's it was really a battle between Boston Scott and Kenny Gainwell from what I've seen from from Kenny. Wait, like he's just a better better running back. So you don't need three. You know, I feel like if you have if you have more than two running backs, you have one too many. Honestly, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so I'm gonna yeah. I mean, let's move on from that one. Um, that was actually a deep topic, but to your specialty. This is the next question because you're, you know, you're All big right. on reading defenses. You're big on, you know, breaking down what Gannon does because you like Gannon. Um, yeah. So the question comes from the Bry guy ninety, who's a regular on flipping the bird. So shout out to you, Bry. Um, what kind of game plan should Sirianni be utilizing to best attack Dallas's defense? And same for Gannon and the offense. Now it's a two part question, right? Do you want to yeah. take Gannon and I take Sirianni, or do you want to do both? Like, how do you want to approach this? Uh, you go first, and then I'll say what I. Oh, what you're I saving the best for last. This is what we're trying to do. You're trying to show off a little bit right now. <laughs> uh, maybe a bit. Maybe a bit. But yeah, right, I so, mean, I don't care. Go ahead. All you right. can take it. Okay. So for Gannon, I'll keep it short and sweet because I'm not really big on defenses and understanding yeah, like sure. defense coverage, defensive coverage. But from what I've noticed so far, the cornerbacks are giving too much room to wide receivers. The linebackers are not, you know, are not doing their job against the run. Um, mm-hmm. defensive line to me is perfect. But my issue is at hand is you have Steven Nelson, you have Darius Slay, you have Vontae Maddox, who are all top 20 quarterback cornerbacks according to PFF right now. They need to kind of cut that room down in at least half. Like you have like I gotta say that you have to make the tackle when um when the receiver receives the ball. How about stopping the receiver from receiving the ball? How about swatting the ball away? How about playing playing the ball? Um, this is a defense that has zero turnovers so far for the year. I mean, zero takeaways. Should, we should have the opportunity. One. Should it should be one because Kayvon yeah. should not have been penalized, penalized for going underneath I'll the go runner. I'll go to bat for that. Yeah, he, he went, was, I mean, he, correct me if I'm wrong, he went underneath the runner. He got from behind, pushed his head down. Like, he, what are you supposed to do there? I'll go to yeah. bat for that one. That um, so that should have that should have gone the Eagles way. But right now, statistically, they have zero takeaways. Yeah. So for a yeah. defense that has zero takeaways, you're facing CeeDee Lamb, you're facing um, Michael – well, no, Michael Gallup, um, Mari Cooper, yeah. and – where the third receiver is going to be. Cedric Wilson, I think. Yeah. Uh, is that um the, the speed kid? Yeah, he's, yeah, he got some speed. Okay. Um, You're facing those those two wide receivers. You have Steven Nelson and Darius Slay who could follow either or. I mean, you know, Steven Nelson can follow CD. You have Darius Slay who could follow Mari Cooper. He's had success, success against them. 
you got to cut the gap. You got to you got to interfere with these receivers. You got to cut their timing off. You got to cut the release point off. You got to be aggressive. I'm not saying play man. I'm just saying you got to apply a little bit of pressure. Um, apply a little bit more press at the line. Um, you know if I'm saying everything right. So that yeah. to me is key. You got to cut the the wiggle room. It can't be there. There's no yeah. wiggle room in this game. You yeah. you pissed off. You lost to the 49ers. Show up and cut down the wiggle room. For the offense, Dallas Goddard has to be involved. If you want the run game to be successful, the linebackers have to think Dallas Goddard is going to be an effective part of this offense. They got to think he, the ball is going to go in his hands at any point. They got to be worried about him. Make Dallas defense worried about Dallas Goddard and everything else will fall in place. I promise you. You can run wherever you want. You can do whatever you want and um, with Devontae Smith, Quez Walk, and Jalen if the defense believes that you're being honest enough that Dallas Goddard is going to be your main focal point. He's had success against them. I feel like personally he's uncoverable um, if you throw if you throw the ball on the right point. And I think he has to be the focal point in this against it against this Dallas defense. I understand their the corners are not not great. Uh, Trayvon Diggs is very overrated in my opinion. Devontae <laughs> Smith, you know, could have the game of his career just you know to really start off his rookie campaign against Dallas this week. But you got to involve Dallas Goddard in order for any of that to happen. That's that's you know that's the cherry on top. If you want this banana Sunday to look great, you gotta throw the cherry on top. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I'm I mean you pretty much nailed everything. Uh don't say that. that. Gonna about don't say that. <laughs> uh, on defense, uh like you're saying you, you mentioned briefly linebackers, man. Just way too mm-hmm. much over pursuit. Uh, we saw San Francisco use that little that little pitch play where they're pitching it, looking like they're coming outside, and then just cutting back in, and and they're just waiting. They're just waiting for Eric Wilson, Alex Singleton to over pursue, and they're coming back in. You you just can't do that. And it's I don't think it's going to be Zeke, man. I think it's going to be Tony Pollard. We talked about this on Tuesday. Um, looking more and more dangerous. I know that Zeke lost a lot of weight. He can still mm-hmm. do that. He's one cut. Pollard looks like the number number one guy out of the backfield right now. Yeah. And he's he's dangerous, and that's what he does. He's a one cut runner. He's gonna get downhill. You you can't give him the opportunity to cut back. And mm-hmm. it's just discipline, man. There, I, I know Eric Wilson's like, like, it's hard to even say he's a vet because he had you know he had one good really good season, but like you know still a, a younger guy yeah. with less experience. He's not like you know a six year starter or anything like that. Um, so yeah, just just more discipline uh, with the linebackers. Um, but you're right, man. Dar- Darius Slay has to look like a number one corner against this team. That's I think I've been impressed so far with Steven Nelson. To be honest, we they look good. good. I'm not gonna lie. It's just cut yeah. down the wiggle room. You, you yeah, gotta cut exactly. it exactly. Uh, part of part of that um, is you know you saw Debo Samuel catch a lot of passes over the middle. When you're playing when you're playing two deep zone, that's that's the safeties. Yeah. Um, the safeties are also I think that they're really trying to hide Marcus Epps like. Again, you, you have to do it. He's you know not a terrible third safety, but you you don't want him starting. Anthony Harris has been okay. McLeod um, can't come yet. Come back yet, right? N- no. So I think again, I think we're, we're we have a question about that too. But obviously not getting coming back for this game. But um, Anthony Harris, man, like you know he's not he's not getting paid like a number one safety, mm-hmm. but really has the ability and and he's been yeah. giving up some space too. So. Um, just collectively that secondary um, just tighten up a bit and that'll come as well, you know, with the communication. Um, but like you, you nail it on the head, just gotta be a bit tighter. Um, D line, you know, they, they take over games. Only, that, yeah. It's the only really. position group you don't have to worry about outside they, of, um, the, they just um, wear on teams. Yeah. And to be honest, like, I'm sure that any Dallas fan would tell me wrong. I'm not that impressed by this Dallas offensive line, especially now with, um, what, what, they're missing. They're Collins they, or because Martin's they, back. I feel like I feel like they're they're skating on um on reputation at this point. Yes, like I don't think they're as good as people. Like they're great. They're definitely top ten. Don't get mm-hmm. me wrong. Are they the best? Are they number two? Uh, are they number three? I, I don't know. So I think that you know you put this defensive line against their offensive line. I think that our defensive line is the better group, straight up. Um, so. Maybe it's just about them finally just taking over a game. We've we've seen mm. a bit of it, but they could really take over a game. On the offensive side of the ball, he absolutely nailed it on the head, man. Need to get Dallas Goddard involved. The best play from the best play from Sunday was um was Quez Watkins, you know, long pass. The second best play was easily the one pass that they threw to Dallas Goddard. Yes. Like he 
He's just electric, man. Get that Look, guy. He almost, got a, he almost got a first down off the um, the field he goal block. Four guys like clawing on his back, and he almost like put put it like his hand to score in to score a touchdown. Like he just mm-hmm. he just easily like I don't even think there's a question anymore. Like okay, T.J. Hawkins they can make a case, but I think Dallas Goddard skill wise, talent wise, the fourth best tight end in the league. I think like it's just about usage. You just need to get the man involved. Um, the other thing is their weakest spot, and we talked to uh, you know the uh, Birds vs Boys podcast on Tuesday, and and uh, the weak link is Anthony Brown is the slot corner, mm-hmm. like just just not a good player. Um, so whether it's Quez Watkins with Devontae in the slot, anything, man, it doesn't matter. You're, I like the the thing is is with this game, the offense needs to score points on every possession. That's mm-hmm. all it is. And and just points. Don't get me wrong. They don't need to score touchdowns on every possession, but you need a field goal almost on every possession. So, you know, I'm not really looking for a Quez Watkins to hit those 90 yard plays all the time. That's not what you need. What you need is first downs. And and way too many times in the second half of last game, it was third and eight, third and seven, mm-hmm. third and six, third and nine. Um, and you just can't have that. So it's running on first down. It's hitting Dallas Goddard on hooks and seeing what he can do after the catch. You know, it was just way too many bombs, way too many of those things. Um, with the run game, and, and you mentioned it as well with, with Jalen Hurts just stepping up in the pocket. Um, Sorry about yeah, that. So, no, no worries. Um, if they're going to put My- Micah Parsons at defensive end, which is what it looks like they're doing, Jalen Hurts, like no offense to the guy. So this is what, what happens up, when you take a day off. Um, so I'm just yeah, about yeah. that. Um, if you're listening to this part, where it's adding it to the last part. So, Morgan, you can pick up right where you left off. Yeah. Uh, I was just talking about the run game um, uh, and, and, and Jalen, Jalen Hurts. So, Jalen Hurts, they're putting Micah Parsons at defensive end. Mm-hmm. Um, you're just not going to be able to get outside of him. So, he's going to need to step up in the pocket. The interior of that defensive line is not that good. Mm-hmm. So, you're going to be able to run out the middle. You're going to uh, be able to step up in the pocket. Um, I, I see a lot more inside zone. Um, but at the same time, I, I, you know, a new player as talented as he is, as a first round pick, he's not going to be that disciplined. So I yeah. can see them. Um, I call it a wham block, but just bringing a tight end across to block him and leaving him unblocked, stuff like that. Um, just to, you know, just to get him off, uh, just play games with him. There's no, no one else on that defensive line that scares me. So you're going to be able to get what you can get. Uh, and then just getting Kelsey up at the second level and blocking Van Der Esch. I don't think Jalen Smith, you know, he, he'll make his tackles. I don't think he's going to be a game changer. He's a, so wild, I think he's a wild card because he completely fell off to from yeah. the greenness that he, he was can at. take over games. He has the ability. Um, but not lately. But I think, this is not I him. think that's – well, you just bet on that, right? It's yeah. like, you know, you can't cover everyone, so who, who do you bet on? Uh, and, you know, and so I think you just bet on, you know, you got to block Van Der Esch. Um, you got to make Michael Parsons feel uncomfortable at defensive end, and then you, you just run. So I think that's how you attack them um, inside zone and then just some wham blocks, some uh, some creativity. Like if he's going against Jordan Malata, he's going to have a bad day anyways. Yeah. I don't think he needs to do much. That's, so really good as um, he is. If you guys are joining us, not... good God, it's been a rough day. The doorbell's about to ring. I just, no, no, I just... no. <laughs> so if you guys are joining us now, um, this is our Dacha Q mailbag where we answer any Eagles questions you guys do have, um, whether it's you know about week two or heading into week three. And Morgan looks like he did something wrong. No, I just saying the times were saved in the. Uh, oh yeah, the I can pick that up. Don't worry about that. Okay, okay, okay. So, so one question that I did want to bring up um, was Miles Sanders. Yeah. So. We were talking about the, the team being second in NFC and running, and first in um first in NFC, second in um NFL. How do you feel like he, he's he's progressing this year towards you know possibly being this franchise running back? Because I don't think Sanders is going to cost a lot of money at the end of um his rookie contract at all. Like it's another Dallas Goddard situation to me. Like underused, so you kind of underpay per se. Yeah, I would be thrilled if they could pick up, give him a contract this this year or mm. at the end of like you know, don't wait, you know, give him the money before he starts costing too much because there's gonna come a time, man. Like again, just like Dallas got way too talented to yeah. stay hidden. And um, running backs, especially running backs that are that talented that are this far into their career with that few touches, like that's that's really what it is. Like we saw it with Zeke, for example. You know, it's Dallas week, so just. Yeah. Got ran into the ground, man. Like he's got nothing left. And then you have Miles Sanders here. Um, 
you know, pretty fresh. Looks pretty good, Absolutely man. Fresh. And he's looking great with his juke in, in and out. Um, oh, my it's goodness. Like that one juke he had with the run up the middle. Oh, bro, he freaking. was looking he's looking good. Like the run he just reminded me of Shady. Yeah, okay? a lot like Shady. Yeah. Like you remember yeah. the, the days where they call Shady happy feet because it's like he moved his oh, feet yeah. too much and he didn't he didn't make a decision. That's to me, that's literally where Miles Sanders at is right now. It yeah. is at right now. Yeah, um, he's looking nice, man. Yeah, I feel like Sanders, like, if he makes the right, like, if his vision is better than what it is right now and he makes the right cut, opposed to just going, you know, yeah, directly. It'll still take a few losses, right? Yeah. Like, that's the issue. Yeah. So I'm still waiting for Sanders to break out, but I feel like, you, like you said, you got to make the move before it ends up being too late because next season could be too late. We're talking yeah. about this year could be the year where out of nowhere Sanders just breaks out because he's starting to see the, the field better. Um, yeah. Another thing is, like, players didn't see the field last year because COVID was just taking over and they didn't know what to expect. And it just was, it was different times. For so sure. Like, this is technically the season to really like maximize off his value yeah. per se. And honestly, a great character guy too. Yes. That's so, so underrated. Loves to be in Philly, loves to play football. Always happy. I've never seen the man down. That's mm-hmm. a guy that you just want around. So yeah, give him a contract. I absolutely agree. He's- this team doesn't need a first round running back, right? They never have. Which is great because so, he's a second round running back and he's, he's not going to cost you much. And on yeah. top of that, you, you have Kenny Gainwell for the next four years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. Right? That's his contract to be four years. So if you have Kenny Gainwell for four years, you sign Miles for another three, four years. Like at the end of either contract, you're going to choose whichever running back can be the fresher one going forward. And it's probably going to be Gainwell at that point. But keep Sanders for now. I mean, you have a one two punch that's probably like, could possibly be top 10 in the league at a certain point. Um, take advantage of that now, my my opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah, he may want to bet on, on himself. We'll see how happy he is with the uh, – Yeah. The con, the I mean, Howie's been pretty good at getting these offers through. I mean, we sure. saw the, Al, the Alshon contract, even though at the end it was a pain in the ass. Um, we yeah. saw the Sean, the Sean contract. We saw so many things work in Howie's favor and also the player's favor at, at that point. So let's see how things go moving forward. This, this is, this is I, like in my head because we were talking about uh, Lashawn McCoy. But did you ever hear the thing? I don't know if it's true or not. But I heard that when he used to juke in the NFL, he would say his own name. So no, he'd he say like, Lashawn or, or Shady, like when he's juking people. And I thought like that's just like the biggest flex. Like, I was like, oh my god, that is a flex. I mean, that's a playground, mo- playground move. Like back then, like oh, yeah, yeah. playing basketball, like Kobe or AI. Shady. Like, Oh, yeah, shady, like, you know? <laughs> oh man, that's just nasty. And you can like, I don't know, watching the highlights back, it's like, okay, I could definitely see him doing that for sure. That is a, that is a bit of a huge flex. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, um, I like that. I hope it's true. I don't know if it is, but I hope it is. It would be kind of wild, but I think Miles Sanders is, is at that borderline point where he's 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 happy for you right now. He's seeing the, yeah. the field better. But he's looking good, man. Yeah, the more the, listen, the more more um, handoffs, the more repetition. Like he's gonna get better as the season, season progresses. Um, yeah. but I'm just worried that he'll end up out of the Eagles' grasp if the Eagles don't grasp on it really quickly. Yeah, I agree. And like, so what, yeah, what's um, the what's the harm? Just it, exactly, it's not gonna cost you much. Honestly, it's gonna cost you pennies at this point. Um, but we did read the the, the last four questions really quick though. Um. I know you you may not make it, but this Tuesday we're actually hosting Mike Hill of Dog Culture on our podcast. Now, if you don't know Mike's story, um, Mike beat no, stage four cancer, and if you've seen, you know, Nick Sirianni talking about the dog mentality, talking about dog culture, you've seen the Eagles player wearing a hood where it says dog culture. This is the man where the motivation comes from. So we'll be, we'll be talking about him more so about his story. And how it led to, you know, how stumbled upon Nick Sirianni, Miles Sanders, Jalen Rager, Devontae Smith, wearing all, you know, wearing his, wearing his gear and using his slogan to face this season. Like, it's it's got to be an incredible background story. Um, so we're really looking forward to talking to him this Tuesday. And, yeah, I mean, next Thursday we'll be yeah. back on this one. And yeah, man. It's, it's going to be a great interview. I'm looking for. I'm hoping I can make it. If not, I'll, I'll, I'm definitely going to be watching. So, if I mandated it, will you have to make it? <laughs> yeah, I guess I would. <laughs> if you don't get paid, will you have to make yeah. it. You don't get paid now. I guess, but... <laughs> I, guess I would. I guess I would. <laughs> but yeah, definitely, guys. Um, make sure you guys tune in Tuesday. Um, before we wrap up, wrap up the podcast, I was not a part of Dallas Hate Week, so I feel a little left out right now. I'm not gonna lie. Oh yeah, 
It's time. So your yeah, your prediction is you got Dallas winning. I need to hear why before I say my. Okay, story. okay, that's fair. So, what what I think is that um, the next time they play Dallas, they're mm-hmm. they're gonna win. I think that going into you know coming off a, a pretty close win, um, you know against the Chargers, I think they're just riding a bit of a high. I just think that the Eagles are uh, too, have too many moving parts right now. I think it's gonna be mm-hmm. close. I think they're gonna be able to hang in there. Um, but I just think that, you know, maybe it's a slow start. Maybe it's just not capitalizing on drives the second half. I, I just see Dallas as a bit more of a, a complete well-oiled machine right now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that this is a team that's beatable. So I wouldn't be surprised either way. I hope I'm wrong. Don't get me wrong, okay. but, um, uh, I'm trying to keep my record as uh, honest as possible. So if, if I'm being honest right now, I think that Dallas is just a bit, a bit more, um, yeah, well oiled. I think that they're a bit looking a bit smoother right now. Okay, so I agree with you. Oh yeah, I wholeheartedly after agree. All with you. That. All right. After all that, after all that, I I completely yeah. agree with you. So my thing is, and I'm gonna be honest for a second. When um with, in the Carson Wentz draft before the Eagles traded up, I was keen to Dak Prescott. I was interested in him. I didn't know much about him, but I, you know, I, something about him just it, he had that it factor yeah, to me. Sure. Dak Prescott has been a very underrated quarterback since joining the Cowboys, just because he joined the Cowboys. Yeah. If he's in, if he's in Carolina, if he's in LA, if he's in um, New England, he's you know he's he's a top tier quarterback no, without question. But sure. because he d- belongs to the Dallas Cowboys, Dak Prescott has been overlooked. I listen. It hurt me honestly because I wanted to see him and Carson go at it last season when he when he went down with the angle injury. Yeah, and Dak Prescott, he's he's a good quarterback. He's not great, but he's a pretty damn good quarterback that knows how to make the right moves at the right moment at the right time. Yeah. Like I, he can I've literally win a game. See him lose a game for the Cowboys. That's the big factor. Yeah, he might I mean, not win it for you, but he's not going to lose it. He's for not you. the reason you you blow it. He's not Tony Romo at the end of the day. Yeah, um, Dak Prescott is the X factor in this game. You have Dak Prescott versus Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is inexperienced. Jalen Hurts is coming off his a big loss, Nick Sirianni's first loss. Mm-hmm. So we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what to expect from this offense. We don't know what to expect from the play calling. Dak Prescott is, has the ability to just, you know, he has that, you know, that um, that say in his team. Jalen Hurts doesn't have the say on his team right now. Dak right. can do what he wants. He can strut how he wants. Jalen Hurts can't strut like that right now. Even though we think he is, he can't. He's you're on a you're on a short leash right now. It's because Nick Sirianni's fresh. Um, I don't trust Mike McCarthy at all. I don't think Mike Mike McCarthy is no. a coach at all. I was just about um, to say, I don't know how he had so much success in Green Bay. No yeah, clue. Do I. Um, no clue. But Dak, Amari Cooper, and Ceedee Lamb, who's my number one Eagle prospect. Like I, I wanted CD for the Eagles more than anything in the world in that draft. Um, yeah. I think they they torch us honestly. And I, listen, if I if I eat my words at the end of the day, I'm happy to do it. But you have two perennial wide receivers who possibly at the end of the season could be both top five, in my opinion. Like Mark Cooper is not a top five talent, but his productivity is top five. Yeah. Um, he's he's Prescott, the modern Larry Fitz, in my yeah. opinion. He's, yeah. he's well, maybe style. not that good. I don't want to put them in the same category yet, but no, yeah, similar no. similar style. Right. But he's reliable on the catch. He's reliable, you know, when he when you need him to be. Um, even though he did gave up a couple seasons ago, and I will never let that and go. He will, but, he will disappear some games. Let's yeah, hope it's one. But he even if he disappears, you have CD Lamb, who's a number one wide receiver on any yeah. other team, anywhere else. He's a number one number one wide receiver. Um, Tony Pollard is breaking out. Ezekiel is kind of dimming down, but it doesn't matter. Dak Prescott is still the son that everybody else is revolving around, and he's mm-hmm. fresh. He's healthy. Um. If the Eagles make Dak, pre- Dak throw for more than, I would say, more than 40 times in this game, Cowboys lose, hands down. I'm going to call that as, as what it is because he has that shoulder injury, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be straining when you have a defensive line like the Eagles. Um, if he throws under that, then it's, it's in the Cowboys' pocket. And I'm not mad if the Cowboys win at all. I think back-to-back losses, it's a learning experience. It's, just, it's a rebuilding year. Take it for what it is. And then you have what? It's yeah. the Chiefs next, right? The Chiefs. Take it then the Panthers. It Listen, I told you that they could still win CMC, about 12 games. CMC, by the way, CMC just got hurt. So, Ooh, that's bad. Who's yeah. the backup? Uh, Chubba, uh, Chubba Hubbard. Damn it. 
Um, but anyway, <laughs> you take it fantasy immediately, immediately going fantasy. <laughs> um, my thing is, um, Dak, it, 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 this win or loss relies on Dak, lies on Dak Prescott's shoulders. Um, but if the Eagles do lose, and if the Eagles do lose against the Chiefs, take it for what it is because if they beat the teams that they're supposed to beat, like I mentioned last week, they're still going to be, they're still in the divisional race. You got to yeah. beat the teams you can beat. If you lose to the teams yeah. that you can't beat and you lose by a small margin, like you lost to the 49ers, you're still in a good place at the end yeah. of the day. You're just getting more experience. Um, sure. I have Cowboys winning this game. I want to say 37 to 28. I think mm-hmm. the Eagles make a late rally in this game. Um, but yeah, that's what I have. So we have to, we have- I actually agree with you, bro. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. Chris would be going mental right now, but that's a all right. little bit. He's not. He's not. This he's not part of this show. So. <laughs> um, I think we did have uh, one question we may have missed just about Roddy McLeod. I mean, I'm not going to speculate on on doctors and all that so, stuff. But... I didn't bring it up because that person actually deleted the question on Twitter. Yeah, I. One thing I will say is I don't see him coming back on a short week. Yeah, no, he's definitely sure. later on. Um, I'd rather have him healthy, man. Like, yeah, give him. Give him um, if I just want to. I just want to say, too, for those of you watching, I'm going to be on um, a podcast. I think it's called Cowboys Unfiltered, Uncensored. Mm-hmm. I should definitely know that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it'll, I'll share it on my Twitter. Um, great guys. Um, and so I'll be doing that on Tuesday for those okay. of you to check out. Um, going to be talking to birds. Let's hope they win because I would love to talk shit to some Cowboys fans. That would be, that'll be phenomenal. Um, and I lo- I would love to eat crow saying that the Cowboys are going to win. Yeah, 100%. I have yet to use the, the – I have yet to choose the Eagles as a losing team this season, so this is my first time. Um, yeah. But before we wrap up again, Tuesday, Tuesday, September 28th, Mike Hill of Dog Culture is joining the podcast. And if you're listening to this show, and if you actually have paid attention to our Twitter, um, Chris's Twitter, Morgan's Twitter, myself – even on PSN Twitter, we're running a giveaway. Um, it's very, very um, simple, you know, rules to this giveaway. And I'll read it right now. So if you guys visit childrensin.org, um, click donate. Every $5 donation equals one entry into the raffle. So $5, you, you're automatically entered into a raffle. Um, send proof of donation to cinfante, psn at gmail.com. That's Chris's email. So that's cinfante, psn at gmail.com. You send the proof of your donation. You're automatically entered to win either a free jersey or a free dog culture hoodie. So we're going to have two winners at the end of that podcast. Um, So, again, visit childrensin.org. Click donate. Every $5 donation equals one entry into the raffle. Send proof of your donation to cinfantepsn at gmail.com. And you can win a free freaking jersey or, like I said, a free dog culture hoodie, which either or is pretty damn dope. Um, to me, this really the the donation hits home because if you guys know me, um, you know, my daughter was born with a disability. Uh, she was born with what's called spina bifida. And these things matter at the end of the day, man, because, you know, the kids are our future. And how you treat these kids and how you take care of these kids speaks volumes of you know the community you're building them up in um if you see my daughter sometimes she'll come on the podcast and just yell like she seems like a normal perfect little girl but you know internally she has a lot of things that you know that we do also have to assist her with so again guys you know it's for a good cause all proceeds go to you know children's in at um national health institutes i think that's what it's called so if you guys can $5, $10, $15. The more you donate, the more raffles, um, the more entries you get into this raffle. And you guys will actually win a free jersey or a dog culture hoodie, which, like I said, either or is pretty damn dope, in my opinion. Yeah, 100%. Well said. Well said. There we go. Uh, so thank you for tuning in to this podcast that ended early and it started again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, had you. a little mishaps. Uh, so Me I do too. apologize Me for too. that. Um, but, you know, we're, we're getting used to the second episode. We, we haven't ran the second episode in God knows how long. But every Thursday or possibly Fridays, me and Morgan are still working the kinks through this. Yeah. Um, we'll have this the Q&A podcast where you guys ask questions. We're going to see possibly we can start doing them live if they're more beneficial that way. Um, but right now we did it on Twitter um, and we answered about five questions that you guys sent in on Twitter. So shout out to you guys who continue to continuously support Absolutely. us. 
Um, shout out to you guys who continuously support Philly Sports Network. You know, without you guys, we would not be here. And I am more than appreciative because you guys have, um, in the, I think it's probably three years that Flipping the Birds has been active, or maybe two years. I think it's, two, no, it's three years. Um, we're over 19,000 downloads. We're over 70,000 views on YouTube. That's like you crazy. guys have made us a successful podcast without any effort. Um, I just got to join too. It's nice. You guys yeah, already Morgan came along, and it, you know it yeah. became the perfect trio. So shout out to all you guys. We we appreciate Honestly. your support. We appreciate the love you guys give us, even though we give you guys a hard time sometimes. But it's all love. Um, but yeah, please look into the the, the raffle. Look into the giveaway. Do what you can. Join that podcast. Let's talk chop. You know, I know everybody has somebody that's affected by you know by cancer right now. Let's be honest. Everybody has one family member that's affected by this. Um, my wife has a family member that's being affected by this. Um, I personally have never felt the effects of this, but like I said, it's for a good cause. The, the donation is for you know for kids at the end of the day. And this kid, Mike, like I mean, I want to say kid. This guy, Mike, um, amazing, amazing. If you if you actually stumble upon his Instagram, the things he says, like it's it's phenomenal. And I'm so looking forward to hearing the story. Like I know Connor yeah. Miles of um. Eagles unfiltered. Is it Eagles unfiltered? Um, he used to be with PSN. He wrote an article about it. I purposely did not read the article yet because I want to hear Mike's story from Mike. Yeah, yeah. I, I want a... I want the chills. I want the feels. You get me? Yeah. I'm that type of person. Like I want the emotions of it. Um, yeah. so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to Tuesday. I'm looking forward to Monday night, guys. Yeah, Eagles, damn. Cowboys, Eagles hate week. Unfortunately, me and Morgan are choosing the Cowboys to win. Yeah, yeah, But I'm in for a wild game. Jalen Hurts is my starting quarterback in my other fantasy league that I care about, not the PSN one. Um, <laughs> Tough. <laughs> but, yeah, um, until next week, guys. We'll see you guys Tuesday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And go, go, Birds. go Birds. Yes, sir.